Let's talk about Jimmy. I mean, I think a lot of Niner fans watched that game last night, uh, emotional, being like, yeah, he's back in your face. Um, do you see that as like a redemptive? In a way, it was. I mean, he had a lot at stake and he won the game. But did he turn a corner? Did he take a, a, a stride? Was he so much different than he had been the rest of the season? Or did Kyle really help him out? What did you see from Jimmy? I didn't see anything different from Jimmy. I saw one terrible game against Miami that was beyond terrible. Mm -hmm. I saw one bad game against Arizona. Mm -hmm. And then I've seen, I saw pretty good Jimmy versus uh, the Jets. And then mm -hmm. he was fine yesterday. I don't know what you can see from him yesterday that should make you change your opinion of him for now. He was pretty good. I think he proved that he's significantly better than Nick Mullins and CJ Beathard, which is fine. But that's not what he's paid to be, and that's not mm -hmm. what the expectation is for him to be. I think the thing that troubles me is that when you see that game plan yesterday, just from my TV eye, I ha see, I have no problems with quarterbacks that have great offensive play callers and just execute the game plan. I have no problems with that. The problem is, yeah, there were a couple drops yesterday, but he also missed a few throws. Yeah, That game was slam dunk, 350 yards, four touchdowns, Jimmy Garoppolo's statement. Yeah. It should have been done. Yeah. I mean, but there then, was layup after layup after layup. Right. Yeah. Right. But then you you call those four screens, right? He starts yeah. four for four for 69 yards, and you can't even remember him throwing on the first drive. Right. right. And then his very first throw, he's jittery, and he throws it behind a wide open Kittle. Kittle, he's yeah. five-yard throw. Yeah. And sitting, he's sitting in the zone, and he throws it behind him. That was terrible. Hey, and real quick, it's, before it's, we go on. Hey, remember when I was whining after the Eagles game about how Kyle called the opening parts of the game? And I was like, hey, man, you didn't need to call those passes right away. There are actually easier passes you could call. That's what I was talking about, man. The shovel passes, the screen, and the and the, the stick throw to Kit, Kittle, who's not moving, facing you. Like, that's exactly what I was talking about. Okay, keep going. Sure. And that's what I was talking and, about. I mean, right, he did it. And, that's it. Right. And yeah. the bottom line to me is that if he just executes and takes yeah. what's there, I don't think the Niners have any questions about Jimmy, and I don't think we should have any questions about Jimmy. Yeah, people will say, well, look, Kyle Shanahan's making it so easy for him. But Kyle, but he's doing his job within the offense, and his job is to execute, not miss reads, and not miss easy throws. And he missed a couple yesterday. And so I think that's where I don't know if I could change my opinion about Jimmy for now. I'm encouraged because it seems that he's a little more confident and he's hopefully going to bounce back and have a good season because the Niners need him to have a great season for them to move forward and be the team that they expect to be and they want to be. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I felt like there was so much at stake for Jimmy in this game and he, I feel like he's not going to get traded at the deadline. He might even have solidified himself as an, another year on the team. But he didn't play that well. Like it's clear, I think everyone can agree that a twenty, a guy making twenty seven million dollars a year shouldn't have to be babied like that. Right now, you, right, I mean, like you can say maybe it's his ankle, this and that. He he needs to do more. And you can say he did it last year. I think he got babied a lot, a lot last year. There were definite training wheels last year. They need to come off eventually, and he needs to show that he can be who they thought he would be when they gave him this all this money up front. Um, so I think like. Is Kirk like I keep coming back? Who's going to be the quarterback of this team next year? I don't think it's going to be Kirk. It's starting to seem like maybe not Matt Ryan. Like it's if it is a vet, it might be Jimmy. But I think maybe if if Kyle really does have to keep doing this type of stuff, that they may pull a Green Bay and draft a quarterback next year and have him sit on the bench for a while and, and, and until he's ready. Because if you say like you take that guy Trey Lance from North Dakota State, who's a terrific athlete. People love him. He's played like 12 games since high school. You can't just throw him in there and have him replace Jimmy. He'd have to sit on the bench. Maybe that's what the Niners do. I mean, we're really projecting down the line, but I think it's an interesting conversation. Right. It is It is an interesting conversation. And, honest, and honestly, just to drop back to where I, where I was, what I was talking about, I think we saw both quarterbacks yesterday that they're very reliant on their coaches babying them and there's two there's two things that i wanted to point out real quick mm -hmm. the first one with jimmy is that i think there's often a little bit of this uh kind of disagreement when people say everything has to be perfect 
for Jimmy to play well. And I think Niners fans point to the fact that, look, hey, last year, Joe Staley was out. Kyle Juszczyk was out. Mike McGlinchey was out. Um, all these guys were out, and the Niners were still winning all these games. It's not It's not the uh, players around him that need to be perfect. Kyle has to be perfect every game for Jimmy to play well. And that's, that's, that's the distinction. When yeah. people say things need to be perfect, Kyle needs to be perfect. And it's the same thing we saw yesterday for Goff. And I think the biggest – Thing for Goff and Jimmy, I think the biggest positive is that Baker Mayfield proved that to even be that kind of quarterback, you have to be per- you have to be pretty decent because he showed yesterday that even with Stefanski, whose scheme is maybe not as good as McVay and Kyle, but he has way more talent than both of them have on offense. I mean, that offense you can't even point to a weakness. The line is good. The interior line is good. Two great guards. Two p- very good tackles. Two great receivers two great running backs, but the quarterback is just bad. Mayfield is awful. I don't like Mayfield. I'm sorry. I just, I'm, I, I, I'm basically of the mind of the, of the previous commenters. Like if your quarterback is immobile, he's a liability. He's getting hurt eventually. Unless he's Peyton Manning. Hey man. Or, or Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger is playing really well. Is he going to win the MVP? Is he going to win the Super Bowl this year? I, know, I, mean, that's I not, think that, they have a really good chance. They might. They really might. And, you know, he might have more rings than two if he hadn't played in the Brady-Manning era. I think he – were we talking about this recently that he might be a better quarterback all-time than Drew Brees, if you think about uh, it? I said that. That's my all-time yeah. hot take. Before I everybody like jumps on me, I think big, big Ben Roethlisberger is a better all-time quarterback than Drew Brees. Yeah. And it's not about the stats because Drew Brees plays in an offense with an offensive play caller that gets everybody's stats. In a dome. And, right. And in, in a, a dome. dome. Big Ben Roethlisberger, I mean, he had one terrible Super Bowl, but he had a terrific Super Bowl in his Still second one. And, right, and he had one of the greatest throws in NFL history to Santonio Holmes to win. He's consistently been – he's had multiple different play callers that he's made look good, whether it's Todd Haley, whether it's Bruce Arians, whether it's this new guy, Randy Fishner. Whoever that is. Right. He seems to do a great job of develop helping develop wide receivers like – yeah, Mike Wallace was really good in Pittsburgh, but Mike Wallace wasn't that good outside of Pittsburgh. And Emmanuel Sanders is really good. He's been really good for a while. Antonio Brown's excellent. These players are all excellent. But a lot, I think a lot of that has to do with the way Ben helps them in terms of how he throws the ball and how he gives them chances to make plays and how strong his arm is. And the deep ball that he throws has a lot to do with how good they are too. How he buys time. He allows him to run double moves, triple moves. All real quick before we move on from Ben. All I want to say is I saw him in person in 2014 when the Niners 15 when the Niners played there with Tom Sula, and you get a better feel for an athlete in person. He was making throws downfield with such precision. I was like, I was. You could realize like I've never seen this at Candlestick Park. I've never right. seen this at Levi's. Like Alex Smith can't do that. That's right. amazing. That kind of arm. And yesterday the throw he made from the right hash up the field, the left sideline to Chase Claypool again. That's a throw we're not going to see from the 49ers quarterback for a while. It's just yeah. amazing. And, yeah, Big Ben is underrated. Um, not just 49ers quarterback. You won't see anyone. that any quarterback. Yeah. Right. Because when you think of Big Ben, you think of, oh, scrambles around, buys time. No, like he has one of the most amazing arms I've ever seen in person, if not the most amazing arm. I mean, right. it's, it's up. is it better than Brady's arm? It's better than Brady's arm, right? It's it's up there. It's up, it's up there. there. So yeah, I think yeah. I th- Ben Ben also like think about it. We when we say Big Ben buying time and all that, he is Big Ben. He yeah. is throwing with people on top of him. How it's strong amazing. does his arm have to be for him to throw pin yeah. with pinpoint accuracy with people hanging on him? <laughs> 